Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. The Kalen DeBoer era kicking off in Tuscaloosa Saturday afternoon. Want to hop into some big storylines and some big takeaways from Alabama spring game on Saturday afternoon. Dill, really excited to get into this one. I think my biggest takeaway, and we're going to dive into it a little bit more, what is Kalen DeBoer going to do with an offensive line that I think is as good as what Alabama's is going to be really during his duration of his tenure in Alabama? You look at Kalen DeBoer, he's never really had a road grading offensive line. It's been offenses that are constructed around a passing attack. And can Kalen DeBoer blend what he does best, designing passing attacks, and combine that rushing attack and that road grading offensive line that Alabama has that's what I'm most fired up about. Excited to get into it. Before we do, and as always, just want to say thank you to you guys. A massive shout out to the Alabama fans, a program that whether it's the recruiting trail, the transfer portal, it's been a blast to talk about. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And Dill, let's start with Jalen Miller. Let's not bury the lead here. What did you think of his performance in this Kalen DeBoer offense? Thought it was really good, and, and, and the numbers won't look great. I think there were a couple bad drops that, frankly, yeah. and those are the throws you want to see him hitting. I think that 10- to 15-yard button hooks, out routes, throws to the boundary. I mean, those throws that I think he missed too often last year that killed drives on third and six or something, he's missing those. I thought he looked really good today hitting those routes, and then obviously getting the ball down the field, especially through the middle. I thought that was really encouraging because, again, those were things you wanted to see is that intermediate passing game work a little better. And I thought today he looked good getting through his reads and hitting those throws. I think you said exactly what I was thinking. And I'm less concerned of the three and nine, three of nine, I believe were the numbers, and more concerned with how did he look in this Kalen DeBoer offense? That was the big question that a lot of us had in is, are you have Jalen Milrow who has a certain set of skill sets going into this Kalen DeBoer offense that – I mean, Michael Penix and Jalen Miller will have some different characteristics characteristics and skill sets. Now, how does Jalen Miller fit into that Kalen DeBoer offense? Still, I thought he looked in command. Like the ball was coming out a quick. It was coming out on time. A couple of bad drops. You said it best. Last year, Alabama's passing attack was really reliant on that deep ball, right? Really attacking the deeper third, not really just the deeper third, like that deeper, deeper third. We wanted to see Alabama become a little bit more balanced in that passing attack, work that intermediate game. thought you saw Jalen Milrow, quick, on-time, accurate with those kind of throws. That was my biggest takeaway. I don't give a damn about the numbers. I look about how did Jalen Milrow look, and I thought he looked quite comfortable in this Kalen DeBoer offense. Yeah, and that, another thing was looking a little bit more decisive. <laughs> where it wasn't just – when the first read's not there, take it down and run it. I thought he'd, again, scanning through. Some of those plays on third down, I mean, I think a couple of them were dropped, but, like, again, exactly what you want to see. Where, Because, frankly, with Kalen DeBoer and how he constructs his passing attack, you need to be able to do that. And you saw Penix do a really good job with that, getting through the whole route tree. Because, again, when you look, Kalen DeBoer wants to use every receiver on the field. He used all three at, at Washington. I think he's going to do the same. He's got another talented group at Alabama, obviously, with guys like Jeremy Bernard emerging, Kendrick Law playing really good. So I think you have the weapons, and frankly, you need to be able to use them a little better than maybe what Milro did last year when it was first look, not there, take it down and run. Let's talk about this wide receiver room where it, I think the narrative is, and I probably agree with this narrative, it's a lot of talent in this room, not a ton of proven production, right? You lose guys like Isaiah Bond, Jermaine Burton. You look at this wide receiver room, Dill, if Kalen DeBoer can do what he does best, and that is maximize the talent in this wide receiver room like he did with the Washington Huskies, you're looking at an extremely talented, an extremely good wide receiver room for this Alabama team. I'll ask you first, kind of the wide receivers that you see being featured in this offense the most in 2024. I mean, I'm going to agree with the our lads depth chart. I think it will be Kendrick Law. I think it'll be Jeremy Bernard and Kobe Prentice because, frankly, I think all three of those guys have shown pretty well in the past that they can do it. Kendrick Law, maybe not the pure receiver, but really good on taking those jet sweeps and some of those things that Kalen DeBoer likes to work into his yeah. offense with screens and some of that other stuff. So I think he'll be big for them there. I think Jeremy Bernard had an amazing day today. I think you'd be really happy to see that as a Bama fan. And Kobe Prentice, I mean, just kind of continuing to build through, played a fair amount of football, frankly, in his career at Alabama up to this point. So I think you do have three really 
three guys you can really believe, and I wouldn't be stunned to see them go out and add another couple guys to them. Well, I'll talk about the – you take a look at this wide receiver, and I'd agree. Those are the names that you're looking at, but you look at Ryan Williams – Coming in in the summer, a guy like Caleb Odom, who do, Caleb Odom just looks different out there. He's going to be a guy that contributes. And I'll even shout out Emmanuel Henderson Jr. As a guy that looks the part, I look at this Alabama wide receiver room and I say, I mean, there's six, seven guys that I think have a lot of upside and do some different things in this wide receiver room. I'm really excited to see Kalen DeBoer maximize the skill set of this wide receiver. And then you look at the offensive line. We kind of said it. I don't know if there's a better guard combination. Tyler Booker, Jaden Roberts, you're getting Caden Proctor back. Kalen Boer has never had an offensive line like this, where he can just sit back and run the football and have an effective offense. That way you look at his time at Washington, Fresno State. I mean, Washington's offensive line was good last year, but it was good in pass protection. What is Kalen DeBoer's offense going to look like when he can really lean on a rushing attack and really try to marry that rushing attack with an elite passing attack that we know Kalen DeBoer can foster in this offense? And honestly, I, I kind of appreciated the fact that he was willing to be a little bit flexible in terms of how he runs the ball because you look at Washington yeah. and how they ran it, a lot of pulling, a lot of stuff to the boundary, not a lot of stuff that just saying, okay, run combo blocks, beat guys up up front. I mean, you saw that's kind of how they were running the ball. I thought most of it was in between the tackles. A lot of just like, yeah, heavy power kind of scheme. Yeah, concepts were similar to frankly, Bama has been running for a long time. So I think he kept the run game in. I think, again, it's playing to your guys. I mean, Jaden Roberts, Tyler Booker, as you said, there's not two guys who are just people movers as effectively as those two in probably the whole country at the guard spot. I think Wilk and Formby looked really good. And obviously when you get Caden Proctor back, if he plays the way he started to play towards the end of the year, especially in the run game, I mean, that's 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 power football. That's so it's a road football. rating. What I don't get is this question mark about, oh, can Kalen DeBoer adapt to this Alabama roster? Kalen DeBoer is one of the best pure football coaches in college football. His record shows at what, 114 and like 14? I mean, this guy is a winner. He's a phenomenal football coach. I don't know where this narrative came that, oh, can Kalen DeBoer – fit his can he coach these kind of guys because honestly the way you need like the way he used to have to do it at schools like indiana or washington i mean you were outgunned with the team yes. especially like when washington wants to go win a national title and has to go play michigan they're not as good in the trenches as michigan everyone knows that so you kind of more have to do some adapting when you're coaching that type of football team than alabama where you can just say all right we're better than you on both sides line of scrimmage and we're just going to play a more simplistic but like simplistic's probably better in a lot of cases. There's less room for error. If you can play it that way, that's why Georgia, Alabama, that's why they play the way they play, where it's just, all right, we're just going to beat you up up front and run the ball really well. I'm really excited to see what Kalen DeBoer does with all this talent. I think we can chalk it up at that. I think a lot of people can just kind of trust that Kalen DeBoer is going to figure it out with all this offensive talent. Now, you move to the defensive side of the football deal. The thing that stood out to me the most is the depth they have on the defensive line. Now, I think the question for Alabama fans are, now you got to try to replace guys like Braswell, guys like Dallas Turner. I counted probably 15 guys on the defensive line, that front seven, if you will, that is like, yeah, I feel really good about those guys being contributors. Now the question mark for Alabama fans, all right, we got a bunch of really good players. Who are going to be the the freak shows, the game records, the Dallas Turners, the Will Andersons on this defensive line? You saw some guys play some good football. Dill, I'll give a shout out. LT Overton, I thought, played some solid football coming over from Texas A&M. Guy super talented out of high school. I am kind of looking forward to seeing who steps up. But I think if you're really confident about one thing, it's probably the depth on this defensive line. Well, I think you're really comfortable with what you have in the middle. I mean, Jaheim Otis, I still think he's as good as they come in terms of yeah. that interior guy and obviously not out there yet. But when he's in the seat, like he's really disruptive. I think you're kind of right. I think, frankly, what I'm looking for is who's going to take over that kind of Alabama edge rusher tree where they've just like going to Anderson, going to Dallas Turner. Who's going to be that next guy? Because, again, you kind of like, like you mentioned LT Overton, I thought looked good. Jamarian Latham, really, really good, I thought, play, playing in – and you guys, guys like Keanu Kout, like he's a guy who looks the part. He kind of looks like the Will Anderson, Dallas Turner, a little bit longer, a little bit more length and athleticism. But I think you are kind of waiting for like him, Keon Keeley, one of those yep. type of guys, those real high end talents to kind of go take that edge rush room over and be that kind of 
not just that stud because I think Jameer and – Yeah, like, the All-American, the game record. Like the, the true dudes on this Alabama defensive line, I'll say this, they all looked apart. Like they all, they all <laughs> looked like they are certainly physically – capable of doing it you can tell Alabama's been cleaning up on the recruiting trail the last two cycles I want to take a look at the secondary as well Dill I am I don't think there was a secondary group coming in in this 2024 class that I'm more excited about Jalen Mbakwe Zabian Brown working with the ones we kind of said he's a guy that was super polished coming out right coming from modern day in California a guy that just looks like a college football player immediately Xavier Mincy and bringing Domani Jackson a lot of young talent but a lot of talent in the back room really excited to see how that shakes out heading into 2024 yeah and that was the that's probably still the question unit for me in terms of like what is it going to look like I don't think you totally got your answers I thought Domani Jackson looked like what you wanted to see from him I thought he played a pretty clean game I think that safety room is frankly where I'm looking and I don't know that that's shaken out completely. I mean, Malachi Moore is really good at what he does. You're moving him back to that safety spot. But I do th- I do wonder I, if there's going to be any sort of more competition or any more ads, especially as you as you pertain to depth, because you're looking really young there. And not guys who have totally proven it at that safety spot. Keon Sab, another guy who's played a little bit of football, but not a total proven starter yet in college football. I think he looked solid today. I thought there were some certainly some moments he probably wanted back, but – I mean, I think that safety room, I wouldn't be surprised if they add guys in the portal and, and try to bolster it because I think you want it a little bit more competitive than what it is now. You probably want a little bit more experience, if anything, because even a guy like Keon Sab, the Alabama fans know I'm a Michigan fan, big Michigan fan. I was not happy when Keon Sab left the Michigan program. This was a guy that was extremely talented for Michigan, but again, has never really had a ton of experience starting. Played a lot, but can you be reliable down in, down out when you got a bunch of young talent yeah, maybe adding a little bit more experience to that back end of the defense. But, Dill, I came away from this spring game, and was it the cleanest game? No, absolutely not. Does it make sense with a completely new coaching staff? Sure it does. There's a lot of talent on this team. Like this Alabama team, as much as people want to doubt Kalen DeBoer in Alabama heading into 2024, you watched them in the spring game. We watched a lot of spring games yesterday from a physical standpoint. They look a little bit different. They look like Alabama that we've seen the last two decades under Nick Saban. I'm fired up for this season. Again, appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later.